My favorite childhood memory of this church was the Wednesday nights. Down Fellowship Hall was just packed with people. We spent a lot of time as kids running through the halls at First Baptist Church. There's lots of places to hide and to play hide and seek. Lots of good memories of kids running around. My oldest daughter was married here. All three of my children have been baptized here. Three grandchildren that are attending church here right now. Numerous, numerous hours working here with the youth, with the children, with the staff, different programs. There's just so many things. And I remember my son in his first preschool program and all the other kids were lined up in the front singing the song and he stood there with his hands in his pocket and didn't move his lips. <laughs> There was a, a lady, a Mrs. Cummins, who uh, spent two years praying that a Baptist church would come to Sioux Falls. And in 1875, a small group of people uh, decided they would start a Baptist church. First Baptist has been responsible for a lot of neat things that have happened in this community. We started Sioux Falls College back in the 1800s. We started in Sioux Falls, the Glory House, back in the 70s into the 80s and reignited, I think, in the 2000s with something called the Firehouse Coffee House. First Baptist played a very key role in Billy Graham crusade coming to Sioux Falls. First Baptist had the very first preschool uh, in the area and it ran for 50 years. It impacted the young people, the children of the community, for parents who needed a place for their kids to be taken care of. Heather and I were fortunate enough to be attending church here when we did the latest addition to the church, the Family Life Center. That was a big moment, I believe, for, for First Baptist. Through the years, they've had different outreaches, from coffee houses to shelter work, volunteerism in the community. It, it's been vital, I think, to the growing community of Sioux Falls. had such a consensus within our church to recognize that this is something that we needed to do. For a congregation as diverse as what maybe First Baptist is, to have the, to have the results of a vote that said, this is what we need to do, this is what we should do, I think that was clear. Peter says Jesus is our cornerstone. It refers to how Jesus is first. His death on the cross provides us the ability, the strength we need to be a part of what God's doing in the world and the work that He's doing in our lives. When they brought me on to be the lead pastor, I knew that it wasn't me coming up with this idea. It was what God had placed on the heart of the entire congregation. And so my job wasn't to come up with this. My job was just to lead us from this location to the next location. When this piece of property became available, um, it seemed like a really good option. And then we found out that uh, it was uh, being sold by a member of the church. It is right next to where the new Highway 100 will run uh, east and west. The location 
I think is going to be almost the perfect location for a church in the future. The history of First Baptist Church is one of being where the action is. People who remember this far back talk about there being a cornfield across the street from our current building. So it was where people were moving to and that's where the church wanted to be, is where the people are. Fast forward, here we are, same thing. People are moving to the south side of town. They're moving to Harrisburg and T. There's people coming into our state, coming into our community from all over. And that's a growing place. That's a happening part of town. There's not very many other churches there. And so we would be in the middle of all of that action, the middle of all of those families, next to schools, close by where life is happening. And we get to plunk down in the middle of that and share Jesus at that wonderful intersection of all of that life and the intersection of Louise and Highway 100. Our world needs what First Baptist has, and we've been here for so long, and we could continue to do great things here, but God said go there, and so now is the time to go there and serve that community well. The building was basically erected in 1950. It was dedicated and, and moved into in 52. So, you know, now this building is over 70 years old, which is old for a building uh, without major renovations. We need a new building in so many ways. We don't have time in, a, in one documentary to list everything. In service, in community, in worship, we're going to commit. There's the limitations on the facility. Dedicating ourselves to the church. We've got 14 different levels. Some of them are just one or two steps. It's not handicap friendly, much less handicap accessible. The accessibility of this building is getting more difficult for me in terms of walking. I find I don't really want to go up to the office area. The walk to the sanctuary even is, uh, is harder. Right now we have families that are having to walk all the way across the building to pick up their children. So we would just like to make it smoother for when they come in one entrance for doorways, just be safer overall for all families. The bathrooms are on a different level than the sanctuary. And for older people, that is a reason to stay home. There's so many rooms, there's so many floors to get middle schoolers from the first floor to the fourth floor is kind of like herding cats sometimes. So I think having just a space that's more conducive to not being confusing and being able to get from one place to another and feeling like it's all the same building, I think will be very helpful. Churches have changed. People have changed. Our front doors, have no glass in them. You can't see into the, the part of this building, the original part of the building. There's no way to see in, in any windows. You know, in 70 years, people have changed and said, we don't go into buildings that are dark or you can't see in. Just think about uh, going to a business and, and the windows are covered and there's no glass in the door. You don't go in there. First Baptist has been in this area for a long time, and it's kind of saturated in this area. But when we move to the new area, there's like new people to meet, 
new people to show compassion to and new people to hopefully get to come to our church. Being a part of the worship team um, for uh, 15 years, uh, <laughs> it's always been terrible having to like tear down stuff every single time um, after Sunday, after playing. I think it'd be super nice to have a situation where it's constantly not, you know, having to move the entire drum set every time and putting all the chords away and things like that. <laughs> When this place was built, it was built in a cornfield, and now we're out looking to build it in a soybean field. I'm in a meeting at the city hall where they're talking about where this goes, and they talk about how big the intersection is going to be at Louise and Highway 100. And it goes right along the southern border of our property. So there's going to be people stuck at a stoplight staring at our church sign <laughs> every day, every single day. All of a sudden, we're gonna go from tucked away back around the corner, 22nd and Colville, we're gonna be, bam, right in the middle of where everybody's going. The new location is going to be a, a great asset for the community. And not only will we have a facility that can be used by the community for events, we've envisioned a picnic area with a canopy, a soccer field, a park, and a walking path, maybe a prayer garden, designed so that people will feel comfortable coming and they'll feel like it's part of the community. Just being able to have that safe place for the children, for families, for our first B members to be able to come and have a place that they call home and one that is just awesome and that we've thought long and hard about um, having it be the perfect place for us. Everything that we've had to do for video technology and everything we've had to do for the internet has all had to be wired in after the fact. Building a new building gives us a chance to not only start with great technology, but also leave room in the building for whatever comes next, whatever the next wave of technology is that we can get done. The foyer that we're looking to build on this is going to be a place for people to come together, talk with their friends, meet new people, have a great cup of coffee. The world will get to see what's going on because it's gonna be a glass front. Folks are gonna know when people are in the building, know when services are happening, know that there's energy and excitement going on because they'll see it as they drive by. I just believe that uh, it's time I'm as tied to this church as anybody, but I can say this church has served us well, this building has served us well, uh, it's time for the next step. We titled the campaign Building Momentum because that's what we want to do as a church not just building a building, not just creating a new space or a new location for our congregation, but building momentum in the life of our church, building momentum in our ministry, building momentum as we pursue God, building momentum as we build community, building momentum as we learn to unleash compassion in our community and in our world. Long before a person writes a check. I think a person has to, first of all, pray. As we pray, as we participate, as we prepare, 
And as we pledge, we're gonna see what God wants to do next in the life of our church. So I think the number one reason in giving to the Capital Campaign is just it's a reason that you can show you trust God in all of this. I feel that the financial gift is paying it forward. The people that came before me did that for me, and I want to do that for the next generation. Moving is going to be sad. Leaving this building and all the memories here is going to be sad. But a greater joy will come in seeing a new facility with new opportunities in a new community. That's exciting. I think the most important reason a person ought to give is because they feel the Lord wants them to give. They feel that they're having a part in God's work and they're simply being obedient. I think if people are obedient, things will get done and we don't have to worry about anything else. If we're obedient, uh, that's enough.